Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act on that. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on. Looking like the trap of dawn. Giving them all on. Like a million bucks, bucks, things in its cups. Mm -hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be but Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. And listen to me. Mm -hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Everybody, y'all listening to the voice. Oh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Okay, here we go today, folks. Uh, this is a good one because uh, today I want to share with you something that that affects every living soul, and that one thing is your attitude. This affects everyone. It is your attitude. You know, I don't know if anyone's ever told you, but I mean, many of you who listen know this, but there are a lot of people who don't understand. A positive attitude can bring about a change. A positive attitude can bring about a change. Well, now here we go with the naysayers. Well, Steve, what you mean if I'm just positive being changed? Now, my mama gone. What me being positive got to do with that? Okay, now listen to me carefully. A positive attitude can bring about change. Well, okay, Steve, I hear you saying that, but they done fired me. So now what does my having a positive attitude have to do with the fact that they fired me? Well, one more time. A positive attitude can bring about change. Well, Steve, I set up in here and gave eight, nine, 12 years of my life to this man. And he just, he cheated on me and walked out. Now, what does me being positive have to do with him cheating on me? How that's going to change that? Okay, here we go again. A positive attitude can bring about change. Now, listen to the whole thing. Now, The positive attitude and the change that can happen starts it, this is the start. It starts within you. See, life is 10% what happens. It's 90% what you do about what happens. Okay, you gave 12 years of your life to this man. He cheated and left you holding the bag, the kids and everything. Now, what does being positive have to do with changing that? Or they came in and they fired you. You lost your job that you was a stellar performer at. But now, how does you have an positive attitude how does that change things for you so far you can use any example here's what happens when you have a positive attitude what it produces within you is a positive approach to life and when you have a positive attitude and a positive approach to life it causes you to be optimistic to have a positive outlook to expect things 
to eventually turn around and, 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 and turn into a positive. That's very important because as the law of attraction comes into play, if you think positive thoughts, you attract positive things. If you think evil thoughts, you attract evil to you. You know, if if you want for nothing, then nothing comes your way. If, if you want for positive attitude, if you want for positive results, if you want for a great outcome, that's what you attract to you. The change will begin within you. So let's take the man that walked out your life and left you holding the bag. Here's a positive attitude. Okay, two things have happened that's positive here. Number one, you've ridded yourself of someone who was obviously going to be, if not already, been toxic in your life. Caused you many restless nights, a lot of uh, uncomfortable feelings and uneasiness, not sure, insecurity. You've been going through it with this person, whoever they are. Number one, that person has been released from your life. Number two, it allows you now to have the someone who will treat you just the way you want to be treated. That's the positive outlook. That's the optimistic way. That's when you're a positive person, you see the positive in things that happen to you instead of burying yourself under the what's wrong with it. A, oh, woe is me now concept. See, a positive attitude when they came in there and they fired you and let you go. Could this not have been just the opening you needed to finally start on a new career path that you've been talking about doing anyway? Could it possibly be a brand new chance for you to get the dream job or dream career of your choice? Could it not possibly be the perfect opportunity now for you to finally, finally do something about that gift? about that talent that God gave you, that thing that you love to do. Could it not be the perfect time for you to pursue that? But if you don't have a positive attitude, then you lay there. Oh, they finna come get my house. Oh, what I'm gonna do now. Oh, this unemployment ain't enough. Oh, Lord, when this unemployment run out, what am I gonna do then? I won't have nothing. And you, oh, woe is me until you become, oh, woe is me. But if you take it from the positive approach, some amazing things can happen in your life. I would tell you on a personal note that some of the most, some of the best changes, some of the biggest moments in my life came after a loss. So I don't want to go down the list, but boy, I could tell you, let me, hey, let me tell you something. When they didn't want me on the radio anymore in LA, when they didn't, when they, when it was sick of the way I did radio out there and they wanted me gone. And on May 23rd, 2005, when my deal, when, 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 when my deal was done with, uh, the beat out in LA. Okay. Look what happened though. Yeah, I was gone in May, but in September 19th, I started the Steve Harvey radio network with four cities. You see, but I didn't go, Oh, woe is me. I said, Oh, okay. God must have something else for me then. Because if he didn't remove me from this, there must be something else. Same thing can happen when you lose uh, and, you, and, you, and you break up in a relationship. Same thing can happen to you. You never know the one God got for you. Now, here you go. Here you go again. Now you get put into a situation where somebody treats you just the way you want to be treated, provide you with a whole lot of aspects of your life you knew nothing about prior to that. But you got to stay positive. If you stay positive, that positive attitude, that optimistic outlook, that, that, that always thinking, God got me no matter what happened to me. Some amazing things is going, can, will happen in your life. It's a fact. I don't know how it works that way. I just know that's what it is. Positive attitude is everything, y'all. So get off the old woe is me negativity train because it ain't going to take you nowhere but down. And get, get your outlook up. If you change your attitude, you change your altitude. Altitude is determined by your attitude. How high you go, how big you become, how far you go. It all depends on how you think. It all depends on what type of attitude you got. Ain't, ain't no, ain't no very, very successful, super negative people. It, it just doesn't coincide that way. If you see that, something that happened to them along the way. And don't worry, you ain't got to worry about it because you ain't going to see them long. Because you can't stay up there like that. It's just too hard. All right? That's the conversation. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, let me have your undivided attention just for a moment, just for a brief moment. I don't know if you thought about it or not, but he did it again. It's another day. He did it again. It's another chance. He did it again, and we are all still here. And I'm talking about the ones that can hear my voice. I don't know if you realize that, but man, that is major. That's a major accomplishment that it happens over and over and over again. There's nothing you can do about it. You cannot make the sun come up in the morning. You cannot wake yourself up in the morning. You don't make the sun set. You don't make the wind blow. That's all I got to say. Steve Harvey, Morning Show. Junior, what's on your little happy mind today? Well, I want to ask you a question. Just uh, trying we've been to having this, Yeah, yeah. We, we just been having this debate over the weekend. I just want to see how you felt. They want me to ask you, so I'm going to ask you. Not married, Mr. Harvey. I'm talking about unmarried, Steve. If you could go on a trip uh-huh. with your ex on a cruise and stay in the same room, do anything happen? What kind of would you rather stuff is this? Yeah, an unmarried Steve Harvey. Okay, yeah. wait, wait. On a cruise answer, with your okay. ex. Do anything happen as a man? Dog, I've been on a cruise with my ex. What, what, what did you ask? No, he's talking about you talking about as now? your ex. Yeah, it, 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 it's you just if you just unmarried, you just got your ex on a cruise. Right. Do now. anything happen? And, you gonna jump age. overboard? It, <laughs> Shut up, Tommy. <laughs> Just wait, wait so no. Dog, I'm going to be down I there signing up for all them classes. I'm going to do it. <laughs> With your ex? Seat shooting. He's not going to have time to Junior, do that. I don't like it. What's wrong with you? What, is this the happy version of Junior? No, uh, we just had it because I don't What's know a man alive who's going to take their ex on a crew and don't nothing happen in the room. We in the same who room. Had, who who you had happened. this debate with? Who you had this? Who was this you with? It's just this a debate, dog. Okay. It's just Call a question. Him. So I have a question. I'm trying to get clarity on Junior's question. So, Junior, are you saying today, if he were to divorce his current wife and went on a cruise with her, or are you talking about an ex from the past? Just an ex. Just an ex. Okay. Just an ex. Mm. All right. Because I'm Cause I was you, confused. Because women talking about ain't nothing going to happen in the room. If I'm paid for the cruise, I pay for the cruise, and my ex is in this room, something got to happen. You, pre- you want your ex? <laughs> Look at your face, though. Junior, is this question for me or for you? <laughs> it's just a Tommy. question. You still ain't answered it. What you scared of? I mean, he's scared of everything. If you wanted to ask the question because you had wrote this joke you wanted to do, no, I ain't, I ain't then writing a joke. I will let you go ahead question. and do it. But I, what is you asking me for? You just got me. back good with your wife. Now you up here asking me to ask questions. Here we go. Mommy, shut up. It was just a question. It was just a question. Hey, it was y'all just, just making it up. Is what it was. Right back on I that I was just damn trying to get clarity. Just because you don't like text. the question. Uh, it was, doesn't mean he didn't have a right to ask it. I just asked the question, Shirley. Sure. Somebody like it. throw pillows. <laughs> 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 Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, <laughs> we have some church complaints for you right after this. But look at his face, though. Now, he just he discussed it with us. Because you don't answer the question. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for church complaints with Reverend Motown and Deacon Death Jam. We are here in a most vociferous way. As we pomphocate our dialysis mm-hmm. of remembrance. Come on here, boy. Knowing full well that we are pulling towards the inner being of mascarity. Yeah. Uh-huh. I know. Let us begin with church complaints before I over preach myself this morning, because I feel Don't do that. I, 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 I say I feel a, 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 a continuity, <laughs> uh-huh, <laughs> you know, uh-huh, uh-huh. things of that nature. Uh, come on, Deacon. All right, Pastor. Now, for some reason, uh, today is all sisters' church complaints. It's all sisters' co- church complaints. They are in a frenzy right now. Let's see. First here, uh, Sister Frida, huh, and Brother Larry. 
got into it this weekend and she called the police. He in turn called Rena Center on her. Now her man and her furniture is gone. Um, she's asking, can the church help her get both of them back? But that's that's just a major situation. Um, furniture and her man oh, is gone. A church have a new policy mm. to refrain from uh, intervening in domestic quarrels and issues. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, one other announcement that we're going to refrain from from now on at the beginning of complaints. Yeah, I will not preach such a high IQ. Uh, <laughs> Wait, why message not? anymore? Because I'm starting to hear from I'm starting to hear from constituents that they don't understand me. So obviously, I'm over their head. So we will go back to. Basic, ordinary, Southern no. revival messaging. Uh, don't you quit being word. the genius that you are now. Don't yeah. you do that. Don't you do that. No, sometimes you have to back it down. I don't want a Dennis Miller the congregation. <laughs> Dennis okay. Miller. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you okay. went over a lot of people here with that one, though. Uh, okay, then. I'm uh, not going to do that. Well, let me put it to you this way. Uh, We're going to okay. Dave Chappelle a more. <laughs> that okay, all right then. Okay, listen here, uh, Sister Denidra. Sister Denidra is asking if we can pay for all nine of her kids to go see the doctor. Uh, they ate some beans and wieners at her mother's house, Sister Lurleen. The expiration date was 1988 on the beans and 2009 on the wieners. Uh, the kids keep saying their stomach hurt. Can, is it possible that we can help the children pass? Well, first of all, them children is not lying about that. <laughs> their stomach is hurt. <laughs> but I don't think we're going to have to take them to the hospital. I think we're going to let the foster care system pay for that because child protection services will be there and have all them removed before <laughs> nightfall once this story hit. Oh, we don't even have to pay for it here at the church. Mm-hmm. We're going to let the uh, system pay for it because the foster care will get them into the hospital that need be. You don't need to be at nobody's house serving hot dog from 2009. Yeah. Amen, Pastor. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Amen. All Amen. right. Sick. Oh, All right. Many this... preservatives in that can of beer. Ain't a preservative. <laughs> All right, we got a situation. Uh, Sister Sharita says she was waiting on Bobby Jenkins to come over uh, Saturday night. He said he came by, but her daddy was on the front porch. She said, no, that was me. I took my wig off. Uh, Now he won't come back. And uh, she want to know what she should do. Well, sister, uh, just going off the small amount of information I have, the one thing clearly to me that needs to be done, you don't ever need to take that wig off again. Because if you get mistaken for your daddy, because you don't have the right amount of hell. Mr. Phillips. Lord have mercy. All right, Pastor. Uh, Here's the situation that took place, too. Uh, Sister Raja wants to know if she's right or wrong. She wants to know if she's right or wrong. Her ex-husband called and said he wanted her back. She told him, I don't date men with kids. And he said, but they your kids. She said, that's not my problem. Is she right or wrong? <laughs> I love her. <laughs> I like the fact that she has developed a new set of standards in her life. And she don't date men with kids, even though them kids is hers and his. I find that to be quite amazing and a, or in the ultimate get out of a situation. Yeah. If I've ever seen one, oh, yeah. it reminds me of a young fella had come to my office recently and asked me if I was single, uh-huh. would I 
go on a cruise with my ex and would anything happen? I said, fool. <laughs> Boy, you sound like a church complaint. Oh, it's just amazing how they, how they is. They think like that, you know. Yo, I'm not going to mention no names because anytime you come to my office in privacy, I remain uh, dedicated to the, uh, you know, what they call it, discrepancy. Mm-hmm. Uh, discretion. Uh, no, no, that ain't the word. Uh, discretion. No, I prefer discrepancy. Uh, yeah. uh, Is this why you don't use big words, my no. Tell me so. which one of my big words to use, no more. You need to Watch out. All right. Uh, All right. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Reverend Motown, Deacon Def Jam, for church complaints. I, I didn't I didn't mention it, Brother Junior. You don't think they know who I'm talking about, do you? No, sir. I believe they have no idea. Coming up next, ask the CLO, our chief love officer. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, we will talk about Vice President Kamala Harris's new initiative with black men. It kicks off today uh, nice. with the vice president in Atlanta. Steve, you had a very special call with the VP Harris, uh, so you're looking forward to hearing all about it. That's coming. So we're looking forward, I should say, to hearing all about it. That's coming up at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO. This is from Johnny in Nassau. Johnny says, my dad and I have a mobile bartending truck. I bought the truck and I restocked the liquor for each event. My dad is a master bartender, so he expects to get 60% of our profits. He is more of an employee than an investor. Should I get more profit? Hmm. Shouldn't well, I get more profit, he's asking? Well, here's the deal. Uh, you, he's more of an employee than an investor. Mm-hmm. The problem you got is, without your daddy, you have no business. Because your father is the master bartender. All you probably know how to do is drive. We can get anybody to drive. <laughs> so I think your father has you in a precarious position. I think you all should go 50-50 yeah. if you put up all the money. But it sounds to me like you may have gotten some money from your father. Now, if you haven't gotten the money from your father and you put up all the money, that was your stake in it. He brings brand equity. Years of know-how and knowledge in going into mixology. So now that comes with the price. But I think he realizes that without him, you have nothing except a truck with some liquor on it. Mm. Mm. So, I, if you have already previously agreed to the 60-40, you have to pay it. If y'all ain't struck out yet and made $1, then it's time to negotiate. Mm-hmm. And y'all could meet in the middle. You think it ought to be 50-50. He think it's 65-40. Maybe, it should, maybe he thinks it's 60-40. I, maybe it could be 45-55. Meet in the middle. But you do need your daddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, the way to make more money is to get a real fine chick that can bar 10 and cut your daddy out. Oh. Right now. <laughs> and then he going to flip that truck over and sit on the phone. So you going to work that from you that bought. happy Nassau. <laughs> All right. Uh, Malika in Stockbridge says, I surprised my husband by coming home early from a bridal shower. I heard him tell someone on the phone that his wife will be gone till around 4 p.m. So he'd be free to talk until 4. He said it was his boss. Was he really working on a Saturday? I don't know, lady. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. If he said it was his boss, if you didn't hear no female voice and, you know, all this here, I don't, why are you calling us? He he mm-hmm. told us, but he could talk to folks. Now, here's what you need to know is, when you came in, did the conversation end? Mm. Uh Uh-huh. There wasn't no talking to foe. (laughs) The boss could be a female, though. No. Well, if it's (laughs) boss, then it's (laughs) work-related. 
Yeah. Ta da. It was. Yeah. <laughs> you saw all it sounds like it was a female. That's why she was upset. No, nah, it don't sound like no female because she didn't say she she said he was talking to someone. And mm-hmm. when I walked, I heard him say he could talk to four. But now what she didn't say was when she came in, he hung mm-hmm. up. Yeah, she didn't say that. Or did he go off somewhere else and take the phone call? Mm-hmm. Which Ooh. was, you know, you don't, I don't talk business in front of my wife. I just, why would she be upset? Why would she be questioning him if she didn't think I mean, cause something y'all always, was, y'all, uh, y'all do this. Something was kind of off. No, no, yeah. ain't no something. Something <laughs> is off. Y'all uh-huh. made it off. Y'all, first of all, you don't, first of all, you don't have all the information. All she said was, I heard him tell someone, my wife is a way I can talk to a fool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She came in, he said it was his boss. Mm-hmm. 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 Which could have been a lie. But, but how do you, but, but I mean, but what you're did not, he say? You're right. No it depends knows. on what she, did she overhear him saying, yeah, I like it when you rub my back. Now, <laughs> then, what is your boss? That's what she heard. Back? Now, I'm saying, now, unless she heard that, Shirley, right. it's his boss. I get what you're and saying. And y'all stop wrecking y'all's marriage when it don't have to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right, moving on. Say that again. Uh oh. Uh-uh. Stay uh-uh. down, Junior. Stay down. Uh. Stay down. You 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 you're talking with a lot of emotion right now. You're gonna say something you're gonna live to regret. Go ahead, Shirley. <laughs> he said live to Faynell. regret. Yeah. Faynell and Raleigh says, My husband and I argue a lot. And when I tell my husband that my what my mom said to me or about me, he'll stop talking to her for weeks. I told him to stop doing that. He said that I need to stop venting to him then. Uh, who am I supposed to vent to then? <laughs> well, I, I mean, look, look, Faye Nail. Now, listen. <laughs> you love that name. Faye Nail. The way you said it, yeah. Yeah, that's Infinity. a combination of faith mm-hmm. and Nail Carter. <laughs> She couldn't make up her name who she wanted to make the name of baby after. So it was Faye Nail. Mm-hmm. That's very close to Fatal. You know, like something was oh. fatal. And then it but it, 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 it they nailed it, so it was Faye Nail. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I can't I don't know. You know, you people just getting tired of hearing you complain, it seemed like to me. You mm-hmm. know, cause people if mama, or her husband. Well, but everybody. <laughs> Because her mama turn on and say something crazy about it, then she tell her husband, then the husband kiss speaking to the mama because he trying to side up with the wife, and now you want him to quit not talking to your mama. You came in and said that the, you, your mama said you're stupid, and you act like a damn fool all the time, and now your husband going, damn, why you letting her talk to you like that? Now he don't talk to her, now you mad at him. We can't get in this. Next question, shit. <laughs> Last one, Steve. <laughs> yeah, Last <laughs> one. All right, Jessica in the DMV writes, I, I got a speeding ticket and paid the fine, but I forgot to tell my husband. Our insurance increased by $89, and now he wants to restrict me to driving to work and for essential errands only for a while. Does the punishment match the crime? Punishment. I didn't know your husband could put yeah. that on punishment. What, what is that, that about? Where, where that come from? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can't drive no more except to work and necessary things. You're not driving no more. Who Does the punishment to? fit the crime? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sit in the corner. What kind of marriage is this? <laughs> no, I can't go in there and tell right. my wife you can't drive no more because you got what? a ticket. Yeah. What? What? This is too too much. Man, get in the car fast enough. Yeah, <laughs> I'm talking yeah. about be driving around this block so damn fast in his I'm car, not even mine. Tickets. Uh-uh. I drive down the street and find that sign that say speed trap. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> oh, I Back can't and drive. forth. <laughs> Oh my. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, does the punishment fit the crime? This is crazy. <laughs> Shouldn't be any punishment. All right. Thank you, CLO. Coming up at the top of the hour, we will hear from Steve on our vice president's new initiative involving black men right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Tyra Banks revealed that she waited until her 50th birthday to have her first alcoholic drink. 
Tyra told People Magazine that she tasted alcohol prior to her 50th, but she chose to have her first fruity drink to lose her alcohol virginity. Tyra said, quote, it wasn't worth it. I was like, this is nasty. (laughs) She didn't like (laughs) it at all. (laughs) And it was fruity. So, Steve, I got to ask you, how old were you when you had your first drink? How old? Uh, About 40. Wow. Okay. You beat her. I mean, 40. When I first, like, got, you know, I had a glass of wine, a whole glass of wine. I tasted a a Stroh's beer when I was 13. That's what stopped me from drinking. (laughs) <laughs> a Stroh's beer? I was, you uh, you uh, felt like t- Tyree yeah. was nasty. Me and Butch. Oh, yeah. Me and my, my boy uncle. Butch. His grandfather used to s- drink Stroh's, and mm-hmm. um, he uh, left his Stroh's and went in the house, and me and Butch snatched it and went in the garage and drank it. Oh, man! I threw oh. up for three damn days. <laughs> nasty. So after right. that, and it was warm too. It wasn't hot. Uh-huh. It, it yeah. was warm, warm beer, cr- and that was it. And after that, I never, I never drank no more after that. And then uh, I tried okay. wine, close to forty years old. Had my first glass of wine. I had a comedy club, never drank nothing in it, never so did. Uh-huh. And then uh, Will Phoenix turned me on the scotch in Paris one time, mm-hmm. and that's okay. when I started drinking scotch. But I didn't, I didn't like it at first. That's expensive. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. That okay. All right. I've never, but I only drink. You know, I've never, I've never had more than one drink before. Mm. Okay, so that was it. All right, mm. you at forty, Tyra at fifty. Uh, okay, moving on. Now, this is a case of grown men taking a joke or a rap beef, rap beef too far. Uh, Rick Ross has received some backlash for accusing Drake for shooting down his plane with some kind of fighter jet. Uh, Rick Ross's plane reportedly had an emergency landing in Dallas, and Ross uh, posted a picture of his private jet with wing damage, allegedly from the landing. The cause of the emergency landing remains unknown, but fans are upset, saying that right after Ross's plane landed safely, Rick Ross should have been praying and thanking God for the safe landing, but instead he did a live video to take shots at Drake, saying that Drake shot down his plane this this is a bit much you know this is this is kind of crazy i don't know y'all's black ass is not that important or powerful (laughs) you ain't got no doggone fighter jet ain't nobody shooting at you Y'all need to stop this ignorant mess right here. Now, look, man, if you just want to show us your plane, go ahead and do that. Show us the plane. Don't be talking about that. He had you shot down. Boy, shot down. boy, yeah. and you're going to go back. You're going to go back up there. Why? Yeah. The FAA so says now those you are got false to go, claims. You got to buy a fighter yeah. jet. Yeah, you can't play like that. Play too much. No, so many no, things. This really yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. Taking it Not too no, far. About to yeah. shoot you down. Right, Rick. Rick was on the plane, wasn't he? Yeah. And okay. Like, and then it could have been the weight on the plane. Uh oh, boy. Uh oh. But he's lost a lot of weight. Hell, though, hell. Yeah. So did a lot of people. But your ass still big though. Okay. And we ain't talking about the luggage. Uh, Rick kind of slim, dog. He didn't trim it down. Yeah, he lost a lot of weight. He kinda, not to say kinda. Okay. <laughs> he word kinda. Yeah. All right. Whatever. All right. Um. Moving on, you know the Met Gala is uh, tonight. So, Steve, I, I got to ask you: Do you plan to watch the red carpet? You're going to see about the fashions this year. Your stylist Ellie Caramo will be working behind no. the scenes at this year's gala. Um, Go ahead, Ellie. Well, yeah, Ellie's really, there, and yeah. uh, he is. Who's he styling? Vogue selected him to design Lala's dress. <gasps> okay. Really? Oh, nice. Lala, I can't Ellie. wait to see it. Oh, Ellie. Yeah. That's awesome. So that will be an original design that Ellie drew and sketched mm-hmm. and picked it yeah. out. And uh, then he hired the fashion house. I can't say their name only because I don't remember what it is. And uh, <laughs> had them, uh, you know, put the dress together. But mm-hmm. the design was by Ellie, and so he'll be there tonight oh. behind the scenes. He won't get inside the gala, but they don't do that. But he'll oh. be somewhere around there. <laughs> Knowing Ellie, he might sneak in. 
<laughs> well, you know, congratulations. The, you know, the stylists and stuff don't don't go to the gala. Oh, oh they okay. don't. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. Aww. Yeah. He's going to be looking so That's fly, nice. though. But congratulations to Ellie. That is major. That's, That's major, huge. Steve. Yeah, yeah. Really. Yeah. Thanks oh, to you for putting him on and all of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so speaking of fashion, finally, there are two, uh, there's some new designer jeans called P jeans available yes. now. Have you guys seen, have you guys seen these jeans? I have seen yes. P jeans. Yeah, P-jean. I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> They're stained stonewashed denim by Jordan Luca, and they feature a dark stain in the groin and crotch area uh, to make it look like you've peed your pants. That's what it looks like. Hey, um, I don't want to wear that. <laughs> you ain't got to wear that. People, you know. Oh, uh, I'm going to get them. Uh, yeah. Some people love it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I'm getting a pair of them for sure. Because, <laughs> you know, a lot of times, you know, if you don't, if you don't shape properly, and you rush out of there, <laughs> you had that little dot on your pants. Wow. And so I'm buying them because then I can just come on out and do whatever. You'd <laughs> be, be yeah. okay with it. They're just $610. I mean, <laughs> so, so from and they're, on dark, they're selling out on. fast. <laughs> we can get them for free. We don't need that. <laughs> you can so put them on and stand. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I stand on myself. Okay. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, uh, we're going to switch gears here because uh, Vice President Harris will be in Detroit later today. And this is the second stop in her big economic opportunity tour. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So today, May 6th, the Vice President um, will deliver a speech in Detroit about her vision on an uh, for economy that works for all Americans with a specific focus on black Americans and building intergenerational wealth in the black community. This is Vice President's second stop on our National Economic Opportunity Tour. And Steve, you know all about this because you talked with her. And so tell us about it, please. Like Shirley said, uh, <laughs> this is the Vice President's second stop on her National Economic Opportunity Tour. And uh, what we're going to be seeing, everybody, is that the vice president is leading a tour about how to build wealth in the black community and showing people how to find the right resources to help them thrive. I think this is good because uh, she called me personally and asked me to help promote this because I, I just think that I'm seeing too many things about people not really understanding all they have done. Now, is anybody going to do everything? No, but they have accomplished a lot. And I think we're not showcasing that. And uh, during her speech, the vice president is going to highlight how the Biden administration uh, has taken historic steps to advance economic opportunity by creating jobs, investing in small businesses, supporting the auto sector, which is going to be big up there in Detroit, increasing access to capital, improving access to housing. Uh, they had a huge program that forgave m- hundreds of millions of dollars of student loans and medical debt and is also championing uh, additional policies that put money directly into people's pockets and build wealth. Now, again, just like last week, this week, you can watch the speech later on today at 2 p.m. Eastern. All you got to do is go online to whitehouse.gov slash live. Whitehouse.gov slash live. And then the, after this, the tour uh, goes next week into Milwaukee. And as they go, they'll be adding the cities as they go. So all you got to do is go at two o'clock today, everybody. Go to whitehouse.gov slash live and learn more about what the uh, Biden Harris administration has been doing. Because we got to fight back, man, because mm-hmm. this election is going to be extremely close. And we again can be the Very. deciding factor. That's right. Just yeah, that's like right. we were four years ago. Yeah. Yes. And when people, yes. like you say, Steve, when people so, ask or, or say the Biden on, administration man. hasn't done anything for the black community, well, here's proof right here. And you talk to lies, the vice president lies, yourself. Lies. Mm. You know? I love it. Going on the road, spreading mm. the they word. They do a lot. I'll tell you who ain't doing nothing for the black community. <laughs> you better and that's call. You damn Donald Trump. <laughs> now, show me what he done done. <laughs> Stop all these wearing these ignorant ass t-shirts y'all done had printed up. In words, words for, for Trump. Trump. You stupid. <laughs> all right. 
Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Vice President Kamala Harris. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, she is here. Sister Odell is back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, as promised, she is here. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Sister Odell. There is no way I would make it Mm. without the Lord. Well, Good morning, everyone. Let's just get to it because it's, you know, morning, a little sister. things going on around here. Morning. morning sister What's Odell. on your mind, Shirley? Well, good morning, Sister Odell. Thanks for uh, coming back so soon. I, I just wanted to um, ask you about this. There was a nail tech mm-hmm. um, in Washington State. Now, she announced to all of her customers that she runs a Christian nail salon. Christian nail salon. Uh, and there are certain nail designs that she just won't do. She said she will not paint on your nails horoscopes. You know, people ask for different designs, and one of them is horoscopes. She, the third eye symbol, she will not do that. She won't do angel numbers. She won't do, definitely won't do skull and crossbone designs. And there are a few yeah. others she won't do. Why? Because she says they are all witchcraft, and she won't do them. And so I have to ask you, have you been to a Christian nail salon before, and, and do you get your nails done? You know, I've been going to the same nail salon since I was, oh, oh, 20, 24, maybe. What? And, um, you you know, all I do is get crosses. I get crosses put on Uh my nails sometimes. And then uh, when I don't have a, I had a scripture put on there. I had a, Hmm. a, a 23rd Psalms on there one time. Oh, um, okay. then I put some heavenly wings on my fingers one time. Uh-huh. So when I did like that, it looked like I was flying. <laughs> oh. I did uh, one time. Um, what, at really? one of my one one of the times I got married, mm. I painted what number husband was I was married. Oh, and so I put <laughs> nines on all my hands, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So he would know, don't mess around, because I will go for 10. And I did. I did. I did. You did. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, that, that, that was a warning. You know, then, then when I put them on, when I got married uh, to my 10th husband, I, I, I put a uh, 10 on there. But in one of my fingers, I put 11, because I kind of figured he wasn't going to make it. <laughs> Just in case you were right, huh? <laughs> so, so what do you think of this nail tech in, in uh, Washington State? She doing the right thing? You agree with her? Well, I ain't saying she doing the right thing. I do know this one. She go miss out on a lot of business. Because I don't care what you want on your hands. I'm going to put it on there. Because for $150, I don't care if you put, you can put a pitchfork on your finger if you want to. What I care. <laughs> I don't care nothing about that. You can put, you can paint them all red with eyes on it. Fall out to your head. <laughs> Make your money, baby. <laughs> That's funny, sister. Uh, <laughs> so you've never gotten like skull and crossbones on your nails or anything like that. Shirley, listen to me. Now you're yes, pushing ma'am. too far. You heard what I said. Now you see, you're going back to what you used to be, Shirley. Me and you used to get along. And, you know, we started getting along because I started cutting your slack. But you're going to stay to keep pushing. You know, good in the hell well, I ain't got no skulls and the, and the bones with the crosses on it. Well, you said you, you started b- back in the day when you were in Don't get 20s. sassy, Shirley, because I can start asking you some. No, nah, well, that's, well, you know, maybe you got some stuff on your nails we need to know about. Huh? <laughs> Just follow Don't get sassy now. <laughs> <laughs> Just polish. That's all. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Right. But you are you are proving that she has a Christian salon, and you like that. Just you want her to make money. So this whole break, you was just going to spend on this Christian nail salon? Yes, you know, yes, that, that is correct. Now. That is correct. And all you didn't that is correct. about this Christian. That uh, is the correct. joke was over at that time, and you should have moved on to something new. But you're not being the professional comedians well, that some of these people is. You just gonna, don't, 
don't don't you sass me, Shirley. I'll tell you what. Wow. And next you're, time you're I come so home special. here. You're so special. Have your little sass ass on me and see what happens. Thank you, you, Sister Odell. Coming okay, up next, a prank phone call for today with the nephew oh, right you after ain't this. Calling nobody special. <laughs> <laughs> you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, his delivery is always so shocking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll get into that, find out what that's all about in just a few. But right now, it is time for today's prank phone call with the nephew. What you got for us, Neff? Shirley, first and foremost, I want to say uh, last night in Los Angeles at the YouTube Theater, what, what, what? We did the doggone thing. Let there be laughs. Let there be laughs. That was hosted by myself and the one and only Fred Hammond in the building. All clean. Didn't cuss at uh-huh. all. Uh, made Good. it through. You made Lavelle it? Lavelle ain't cuss. JJ ain't cuss. Kev on stage ain't cuss. Tony oh, Baker. Cuss. Nobody cussed. We had a wonderful, wonderful family good time all right now this coming week though gonna be some cussing okay i'm just gonna tell you about that <laughs> you're bad tell you, I, you're uh, bad yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah i can't do two weeks straight now nah, i'm just telling you so uh, i'll let y'all know about uh west palm beach right after this prank this prank is settlement chick settlement chick how many of y'all have been waiting around the, the settlement check. Well, I'm going to give a young lady a call and let her know that <laughs> with the number you thought you was getting, <laughs> it ain't going to be the number. Hello? Let's go, uh-huh. cat dog. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Settlement check. Yeah, you know, I'd be a lawyer some days. Some days I'd be doctors. Some days I just, you know, I'd be the one that Pastors. was, uh, you are yeah, an actor. you know, you are your wife's actor. work husband. I'd be living everything right now. Right now I'm a lawyer. <laughs> this is the settlement check. The settlement check. Let's go, cat dog. Thank you. Hello? Right. Uh, I'm trying to reach um, this place. This is she. How you doing? It's attorney over to and Associates. Uh-huh. All right. want to give you a call. I just got your file that hit my desk, and I, we got a check going out to you on Monday. You came in yesterday, correct? Yes. Okay. Listen, we got a few little glitches here we want to go over with. I want to go over with you and make sure uh, we get this all ironed out before you come in on Monday, and, and uh, I'll have a check definitely waiting on you when you get here. All right, you're supposed to be getting six thousand four hundred and ten dollars. Okay. Unfortunately, it's being reduced to twelve hundred due to uh, injuries not being as uh, as bad as they say it was. A lot of calculations got really mixed up on our paperwork here. And please keep in mind that on the twelve hundred, we still haven't taken out our fee, which is like about thirty three and a third. We'll have a check for you on Monday in the ballpark of four to five hundred dollars. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm still not getting it. So. What was the total amount that y'all got from the law, from the um, from the insurance? The, the, evidently, the person that did these calculations completely did them wrong. And I do apologize for this being a, a mishap on our part, and it's totally screwed up. And I do apologize on the behalf of the uh, of the association here that we've dropped the ball on that. But your actual check has been reduced to twelve hundred dollars, okay? And that's without us taking the law fees out of it. So I I. I, I guess it's- Right, because the how would six thousand dollar cover the doctor bill and the chiropractor? Well, from my understanding, ma'am, what they're also stating is that your injuries are not that bad, and I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. They're actually wondering if you were actually hurt at all. So I was actually hurt because I even had to get injections. Okay. From the chiropractor. Okay, and and do you have any? You, I have some medical documents here, and and I understand that you've been going, and you probably it looks like you went over at least uh, at least two months going to the doctor and getting uh, and getting therapy. And and, and, and that I, was his call. That say, was the chiropractor's call. That wasn't my decision. Okay. Well, a that lot. Was of, his call for my for my injury. Exactly, and a lot a lot of these doctor fees and, and that you've gone to has, has eaten up a, eaten up a lot of these funds. And uh, I tell you, these doctor bills they get pretty high out there. I do want to apologize. What we're going to do here, since we've dropped the ball on this, we're going to give you the check for twelve hundred and not even take the law fees out of it. And I'll have that check waiting on you on Monday morning. That's still okay. I understand what you're saying, but what I'm trying to figure out is from the. I need to see some paperwork of saying, stating what was the amount, total amount check that was written from the insurance company, plus what was the portion that was supposed to be taken out for the chiropractor, plus what was the portion that was supposed to be taken out from the doctors itself. For the amount that you're telling me, 6000 that's not going to 
wouldn't have covered that Ma and leave me with only 1200 Okay, I'm not at liberty to let you look at this paperwork anymore. Uh, I, I'm calling you basically to let you know I have a $1,200 check for you. If you don't want that, then you can go ahead and take some other legal well, this, if, I mean, I, that doesn't sound right. Well, I, was, I mean, for, from the entire month, because I got the paperwork from the chiropractor stating what amount was paid. I understand that, ma'am. I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to let you know, Manisha, is there, there, what's going on right now is the response coming back is that you're not actually hurt at all. That's what they're saying. They're saying you're not hate at all. Actually, I don't want to use the words, but they're saying that you've been faking this the whole time. I need to see some paperwork before I try to, to check it. This doesn't sound right. That doesn't make any sense. Well, uh, right now, you know, I'm the last person that, that, that this file is going to come across. It's coming across my desk. This is pretty much a take it or leave it option, you know. I'm and if you don't leave it option. Is, no, 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 no. I mean, you don't have to get an attitude with me because you are my lawyer and I am your client. This well, you're not going to raise your voice. You're not going to raise your voice at me. That's not going to happen either. So let's let's pipe it down a bit, okay? Now, here's what we're going to do. Do you want the twelve hundred dollar check or do you not want it? Now, I've already wavered the fees of the of the attorneys here. Do you want the twelve hundred or do you want me to reduce it to four hundred? No, I don't want twelve hundred because I'm going to take you to court. Cause that doesn't sound right for you to me around. You're supposed to be my lawyer. I'm being the best attorney that you probably could afford, young lady. Okay, and I'm trying to do the best I can to help you. Now, you, you, if, if, if from what I understand is, I'm sorry, sir, that's not going to be acceptable. I just have to get to get a lawyer to sue you, but that's not acceptable. You know, you know, you people been continue in the office, to want to. I came in the office yesterday when we came in. How all of us I, work got me. I didn't. I wasn't there doing the meeting yesterday. Like I said, these papers just landed on my desk today. What I'm not going to tolerate is you people consistently wanting to file a lawsuit on somebody. Now you want to file a lawsuit on me. You know, you, it's, you're going way too far with this. This is not sound right. I want to talk to because I've never heard of you. I only heard of Okay. Well, now you've heard of me. I'm and I work here as well. And I'm not going to stand you uh, 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 dismantling me the way that you're doing. I just have to get a lawyer to sue you, so that's not acceptable. I got one more thing. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked. You got pranked by your husband. <laughs> I'm going to kick your <laughs> Oh, your husband told me. She's been waiting on that check. Yeah, I had me hot. I was about to go by that little office tomorrow when I get off of work. <laughs> All right, baby, let me ask you something. Tell Tommy, what is the baddest radio show in the land? Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, baby, look here. Get your check. <laughs> Come on, give it to me. Give it to me. Get a prank or something. King of pranks. Well, ain't done, we ain't done no prank, prank praise up in here in a minute. You no, know, I didn't pray last night. Her. Boy, yeah, y'all. I don't on, know I'm nobody else do it like you do, man. I'm mm, telling like you, you do pranks, so not like you, you don't, Tom. Come on here. You're right. Come on here. Come and on. And you ain't you some prank. Woo, For those of you that think the pranking has gone too far, come on. Come on. <laughs> All right. This weekend is going down. This is an evening, an evening with nephew Tommy in West Palm Beach. Oh, my God. You do not want to miss it. It is going down. It is Friday and Saturday night. This Mother's Day weekend coming up. So bring your mama, bring your baby mama, bring all your mamas. Y'all come on out. It is at the Rinker Playhouse at the Kravis Center. The Rinker Playhouse. This is so, you, if you never heard me sound so elegant before, but it is an evening with nephew oh, Tommy. Really? Well, there's two shows on Friday and two on Saturday, and they're almost sold out at West Palm Beach. It's been a while since I've been there. <laughs> oh, dear. So, please, come on out and what is <laughs> gather that? around. What is that? It's going to be absolutely ravishing. The show's on Friday, almost sold out. The show's on Saturday, almost sold out. Oh, dear. <laughs> Tommy is coming to town. <laughs> You and then, a British. And then, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then Sunday, I got to get on a plane because it's Mother's Day, and I got to get back because I can't. Oh, Lord, if I don't see my mom and my wife on Mother's Day, I'm going to be in trouble. Shirley, if you would. Thank you, I'm nephew. I'm sorry, Shirley, if you would. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, it is my strawberry letter for today, and the subject is his delivery is always so shocking. We'll get back into it, or we'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, it is time for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, his delivery is always so shocking. (laughs) Is this about Steve? I don't know. We'll find out. Dear Stephen Shirley, I met a man. We clicked. He showed me his representative for the first few months. Now I see some things that make me wonder if I want to continue our relationship. These are things that I think he can control, but he didn't act like this in the beginning of our relationship. He has no filter in anything he says or does, and his delivery is always so shocking. I took him to meet my mom, and he unleashed the madness as soon as we got in her driveway. He asked if I grew up in that little house, and I could not believe him. He grew up in the project, so I told him he had no room to judge me. He said he wasn't judging. He just asked a question. He continued to insult my mom and I. He refused to sit down because he said the dining room table was too dusty. I kept cutting my eyes at him, but he didn't get it. He is also very direct in the bedroom. Our first sexual encounter was encounter was at his house after we watched a movie. He said that I had teased him long enough with my legs all across him and I rubbed and touched all over him. So we might as well go to the bedroom so he could give me what I really want. I was shocked, but a little turned on. I had no idea that every sexual encounter would start off like this. Now he'll usually say something like, let's go on ahead and get this out of the way. He told me that he always, he's always been like this and it's probably why he's still single at 42. I cringe when he picks me up uh, because if he's asked me more than a few times, if I'm sure I want to wear what I'm wearing. So I put him in time out for a few days. If he's not willing to change, is there a way to tolerate this bad behavior? Well, only you can determine that. Only you can determine that. But I will say this. Here we go again. Women always want to change a man. You cannot change a man. You can't do that. Only the man in question can change himself if he wants to. This man that you have right here is who he is. He is his authentic self. You don't like it, and it's okay that you don't like it. You don't have to put up with it if you don't want to. And why should you? But you have talked to him about his delivery and how he comes across to you, haven't you? You have to tell him how this makes you feel. I mean, especially if you think he's being rude to you and your mom. Uh, I must say, though, him asking you if you grew up in that little house could have meant just that, asking you a question like he said, or uh, him saying he wouldn't sit at your mom's table because it was too dusty, because it was too dusty. While it was blunt, was he lying? I mean, it sounds like you're trying to find something, anything wrong, because you don't like how he says things. You don't like how he says what he says, especially when it comes to sex. So, you know, maybe if he can temper how he says what he's saying, then maybe you guys can have a chance. But yeah, it's that how that has you shook. Steve? Well, I don't think it's nothing to this letter except maybe, you know, have a little, you know, reenactment of how maybe this could go. You know, <laughs> dealing with a man ain't got no coof. What you want us to do? Yeah. He ain't got no coof. This dude a damn fool. Mm-hmm. 42 years old, single, talking to people like that. You know, look, here's the deal. Uh, y'all clicked. He has no filter in anything he says or does. And his delivery is shocking. Let's just start with this one. I took him to meet my mama. He unleashed the madness as soon as we got in her driveway. He asked if I grew up in that little house. What he said was, you grew up in this little ragged ass house? <laughs> oh my goodness. What you, Cinema, what, we finna go in here? That's what he really said. <laughs> oh, you, is is wait a minute? Is some people that live in here? <laughs> you lying. So now you dealing with that. Then he get in the house, and he said he wasn't sitting down at your mama's table because it was too damn dusty. Ooh. You cutting your eyes at him and everything, trying to get his attention, but he didn't get it. 
So now you just have a man who just, he do like he want to do it. Even when y'all got ready to have, uh, you know, your little affair the first time, you know, after y'all watched the movie, he said I had teased him long enough with my legs all across him. I rubbed and touched him all over, so we might as well go on. Might well go on, get on in his bedroom, go on, break it off. Have you ever said that? Let me go on, and go on in here and give you this here. Let me go on in here and give you this here what you want. Yeah, I know what you want. And then you were shocked, but you was a little turned on. Well, all right now. Okay. But I can tell you what happened, though. You got in there and it wasn't what he said it was going to be. That's probably what you're mad about. Now, now every time y'all go get half a second, let's go on in here and get this on out the way. <laughs> I just, look. Are you rubbing your your forehead right why, now? Why is you tired of some monkey? I think <laughs> Yeah, I'm just rubbing my face. I'm frustrated with this dude. I just don't know what to do. When we come back, Shirley, yes. you'll give me a statement mm-hmm. or ask me a question, and I'm going to show you, not in, in, a, in a clean way, of course, I'm going to show you some of the shocking things that this man would be saying. So when we come back, Shirley, just ask uh-huh. me some questions. Okay. Like we're dating or we're going to meet somebody. Mm-hmm. Ask me the question. And then I will give you the answer that Mr. Mr. Delivery, Mr. Shocking Delivery always mm-hmm. does. All right? That's what we do. Okay. All right, Steve. Well, uh, we'll have part two of your response and our reenactment coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. The subject is today for the strawberry letter. His delivery is always so shocking. Back at it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is his delivery is always so shocking. She's dating this man who is he doesn't have any coof. He say whatever he want to say, how he want to say it, which is why he's single at 42 and ain't nobody putting up with this. So mm-hmm. what I'm going to do is just for purposes, Shirley will ask me a series of questions. Okay. I will take a pause and then I will show you the shocking reply he's probably using. Just anything, Shirley. I don't care what the subject is, grocery okay. shopping, pastors, church, <laughs> anything. So go ahead. Where I know you said you were going to take me out tonight. Where are we going? Well, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know where I could take nobody like you. You know, it don't look like you've been nowhere. So I pretty much anywhere I take you, I'll be good enough. <laughs> wait, 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 what are you going to do? Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> anywhere. Anywhere. <Yeah. laughs> McDonald's wow. is good too. He's pretty, what? pretty blunt with it, isn't he? <laughs> All right, you know what? I, the first time we went over my mom's house, it didn't go too well. I, I, I think we should go over there, and and you know, you should try and get to know her again. Go back. Go over there for what? I've already been over there. The little little house was tight as hell. <laughs> you know, I don't know who your mom is, but she she must be that old ass lady that lived in the shoe had all them kids because it's crowded up in there. <laughs> <laughs> It's terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, honey. You can't talk like that. Um, Well, look, look, we're going to church on Sunday, you know, um, and I wanted to know, I bought this new dress. How do you like it? Well, you said we're going to church, right? Yeah. And then that's the dress you're going to wear? So what are we going to church for? You're going to go to hell anyway. (laughs) What? (laughs) What? He's a trip. (laughs) And and. Wow. And and after church, I was thinking, you know, instead of going out for a change, we could come home and I can cook you dinner. Now, come on now, baby. What? <laughs> you know you can't cook, Shirley. Come on. <laughs> yes, I can. You've eaten my food several times. No, good and hell well, you can't cook. My, ain't, nobody, my roast. ain't nobody finna do that. I made a roast. Ain't nobody finna do that. I'm, I made a roast. Okay. You Girl, you don't like know how to roast. Right there. <laughs> you don't know how to roast. <laughs> you fell out of character. You were Steve was talking to Shirley. <laughs> Shirley, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, we're talking about. Yeah, cooking. I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Get back into character. <laughs> it's not about me, <laughs> Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> he like my bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Did you really grow up in the projects? Did I really grow up in the project? Yeah, because you asked me about my Hell little yeah. house. 
Yeah, Ain't that what? where your mama stay now? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. My mama dog. My mama. <laughs> this is where your mama stay at now. Huh. <laughs> Shirley. <laughs> you gonna talk about my mom like that? That's not nice. Don't talk about my mother. Mm-mm. Don't talk about your mama. Well, you heard look, me. I wouldn't have nothing to say about your mama except when I went over that first time. Well, hold up now. You know, I'm the one got to sit up in the little dirty ass little chairs and everything. <laughs> you know, maybe you need to spend some of your money to get a housekeeper over there to help your mama. I don't mama. know how she eating off that little dusty ass table myself. <laughs> I really don't. Hey, listen, I got to go to work early tomorrow. Do you mind dropping the kids off at school for me? Drop the kids off? Yes. Them ain't my kids. Why don't whoever made them kids drop them off? <laughs> You're just so wrong. You're just so wrong, You're just so wrong He's with so it. direct, though. I know. It's yes. too much. No filter. Your, your <laughs> delivery is shocking. Your delivery is just shocking. I just have yeah. to tell you that. Well, shock, 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 shock. <laughs> Everybody shocked. I was shocked when you found out you had them kids. Cause you know, you know, cause, cause you know, cause, cause you know, you know, you know, look, you kind of look like you took care of yourself. So uh -huh. I ain't know you had all these <gasps> kids. Now I'm just trying to deal with it. <laughs> wow. What are you seeing this guy? Wow. You just wow. say anything, huh? <laughs> I'm not finna start my life over at 42 and, and start picking up with somebody. Three kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Must be crazy. All right. Well, listen, my girlfriend and I, um, what do you think about us going on a girl's trip? Because we haven't done that in a minute and we wanted to get away. Hey, baby, you can go on all the trips you want, but don't ask me for no money. Because, you know, because unless I'm going down there and all them girls is mine, why would I pay for the trip? So what are you asking me about the girl trip for? No, I'm just going with Claudia, my best friend. You know, you know Claudia, right? My best friend, the tall one. You know her. Oh, Claudia? No, nah, I don't uh, want to go down there. I wouldn't go down there with Claudia. No way. How well, much Claudia wait now? <laughs> <laughs> why is that a question? Direct. I think we're gonna break up. I, I really do. Immediately. I, I really think we're gonna be How much we're, Claudia we're breaking now? up. Yeah. You're too much. Uh well you can break up with me if you want to. You you have somebody to go eat with, just ask Claudia, because she'll take her ass down there and eat that time you want to eat. Leave your comments on today's Strawberry Letter on Instagram at Steve Harvey FM and check us out on the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app where free never sounded so good. Coming up next, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got for us, Junior? Okay, Shirley, before I get to that, let me just tell everybody, June 1st, June 1st, Dallas, I'm coming back. The Cheers Hope 5K Run and Fun Walk is happening again this year. And this is the first year it's all sponsored. So it's absolutely free. Just go to CheersHope.org. That's CheersHope.org. And come on out, man, and watch us shake the cell, <laughs> shake the sickle cell. Because this is important, man. This is the first year I've ever done this. Absolutely free. They actually be sponsored. Is I'm, I'm going to be there. I want everybody to come out, and they're going to give me another proclamation from the state of Texas, man. I'm excited to see y'all on June 1st. So let's go ahead and do that. All but right. Unc, here we go, Unc. The Pacers close out the Bucks. The Knicks close out the 76ers. Cleveland. Come on, mm. Cleveland. Cleveland Cavaliers close out Lando. Game 7 last night, 106-94. Unc, do you believe now? You I still ain't happy. Close out the series against Orlando. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, you know? but what about Boston? Because that's who y'all playing have... next. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's when yeah, you got to come on back right down there. to reality. Man. <laughs> you just got to go and deal with you know good run, you know nice. <laughs> Wait a minute, you, you saying want... we going home? We already going home. Dog, listen to me. I... They're gonna put Boston. Up a fight. Boston is gonna be in the NBA Finals. Not if Cleveland, if Cleveland show up, y'all not, they not going to be there. If y'all just do y'all part, they're not going to be there. Don't give them that. Boston, don't give them that, huh? Dog. You got to believe, Uncle. Uncle, you ain't you gotta, even, you, gotta, you ain't even trying, though. 
Yeah, hey, dog. You already didn't gave up. You just dog. I'm old enough now to where when I bet my money, I bet my money to win. I don't, I don't bet the heart no more. I stopped doing that long. Time you don't bet ago. the heart. The no, heart. No, no. My heart wants to say Cleveland gonna destroy Boston, but I I've seen Boston play. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it all the way. That's so 100. No sense, That's 100 right doing? there. Yeah. It's nice that we got it. Now, if by some crazy hap that Cleveland win, you know, I'm on the bandwagon. I'm just hanging off the back. That's all. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, Donovan Mitchell put up 39 points last night. Uh, and you still don't, don't believe I him. I text Donovan Mitchell. Oh. I text him. Thanks, what? Unc. We talking. I'm, yeah. I'm encouraging him, okay. congratulating him and everything. You're going to text him after the first game in Boston? You're going to text uh, him in? No, no, I'm going to let the series go out. I don't you know. <laughs> I just believe in Cleveland, man. I'm going I'm to root for y'all. I believe y'all can get Boston, man. Yeah, I believe man. y'all can get them. Mm. Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, Donovan Mitchell. That's enough. Yeah. We can win this, man. Let's go ahead and go. Yeah. Let's go, Cleveland. Let's yeah. go, Cleveland. Yeah. Let's go, yeah. Cleveland. Yeah. I'm going to do it for you. Rockets will be in the NBA Finals next year, Oh, that year ain't too. happening. Yes. That ain't, that ain't All that right. Possible. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Junior. It is. Co- <laughs> coming up at the top of the hour, a wife, Steve, gave her husband a hall pass, and she's shocked by who he chose to use it on. Mm. She definitely needs some advice. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. This is from Mackenzie in Houston. Mackenzie says, I let my husband have a hall pass after he caught me sending nasty text messages to another man. My husband asked if I wanted to meet the woman first, and I told him I didn't want to know anything about her. Recently, I was shocked to find out that it was our pastor's ex-wife that he slept with. This woman is considerably older, and she acts like she's old. I'm so confused by his choice, and I'm furious with her for sleeping with my husband. Why did he choose her? Is this something they both have been wanting to do all along? He's stupid. Why he... Girl, this is something they done done before. <laughs> First of all, do you want to meet her and all mm-hmm. this here mess? They done done this before. Old ass, old pastor, old wife been breaking it off with him for some time now. Now you send the nasty texts. Now you done gave your man a hall pass. Now you shocked at the, at the who he picked. Yeah. I tell you what. Now she has rules. Well, no. Let me stay out this hall pass conversation. I don't what? want a hall pass because you give it to me, you know, it's not even going to make no sense. I, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. <laughs> what that mean? No, no law. Uh-huh. <laughs> what you going to do? My mm-hmm. relationship will forever be changed. <laughs> Let me just go on, stay on this little straight and narrow. Mm-hmm. Okay, Next try question, to make it sure. to heaven. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we do have time for another one, Steve. This is from Anna in um, uh, on Long Island. She says, I'm in love with a married man, and he told me he filed for divorce, and he had me uh, tour homes with him. I thought he was buying the house and moving in, but the realtor called me yesterday and said she needs to run my credit because the lease will be in my name. (laughs) So my man that I assumed he was buying a house for us, and he said it's more like my house. Why did he change the plans? (laughs) He He got game, boy. Well, because he's getting a divorce. (laughs) That can't show up. Yeah. This can't show up nowhere. He's getting a divorce. He can't be out filling out credit apps. <laughs> what you think? He can't do none of this here. But uh-uh. Uh-uh. Now that ain't how this go. No. Mm-mm. Mm. So, uh. so he, he can't he can't fill out no paperwork. <laughs> Going to the divorce. <laughs> This That's is it. your house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He still got to go to court. He got to go to court. <laughs> Can't have no another house. Well, yeah. It's going to be a little much. Mortgage company, the deed, the title company. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> this house now. So him and Kendra got a house, huh? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Then. Put that in there, Judge. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> oh man, yeah. <laughs> Forensic Let accountants gonna assets. find all of that. They gonna yeah. find everything. <laughs> When we get through with this assets, we're going to see where your ass set. We're going to see. <laughs> we're going to get through with these assets. We're going to see where your ass set. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Uh-uh. Yeah. No. So, no. So that's it. He's married and uh, he can't do it like that. So you no. really think he's going to file for a divorce? He's going to get a divorce? You really think that's it? Oh, he running game. No, they filing for divorce. Uh huh. But he can't have no paper trail. Right, right. <laughs> you okay. Frustrated, Steve. You mad? Yeah. That's all. <laughs> What's this house at four three five Long? Yeah, I know Drive. this here. Y'all need to get off this subject. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Who, you don't like who, it. You don't like where this guy? is going. <laughs> yeah, no, he doesn't. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Who's this ranch style home we ain't know nothing about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> All right. Um, coming up in 20 minutes after, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You don't want to miss a minute of it <laughs> right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Junior, this one's for you, okay? We all know Cinco de Mayo was yesterday, so we wanted to make sure that you're aware that your favorite restaurant is celebrating Cinco de Mayo all month, okay? You know who your favorite, okay? All this month. uh, Yeah, all during the month of May, Applebee's, Junior. Hell yeah. Applebee's. Hell yeah. (laughs) Okay? They're gonna special, be serving. Special spot, no. What? He loves Applebee. What? Apple what a neighborhood me that boy. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> so Applebee's are going to be ser- is going to be serving the Dollaria. The dollar. The Dollarita. Dollar. Y- y'all have got to go down there and get. What now? What is that? Fact, what is a Dollarita, Junior? It, it's a dollar for a margarita at Applebee's. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Let me nice. tell you something. This mm. month of May, all my business meetings is at Applebee's. Meet me there. <laughs> But well, you're gonna mix oh, business with Dollaritas? Do- gonna- Did you hear the number? One. Uh-huh. <laughs> one. <laughs> one dollar. One dollar. Why are we going somewhere else when it's ten? It's one over here. <laughs> <laughs> Same day of the team. Same one. <laughs> Y'all meant before, did I celebrate single to Maya? Had a poncho yeah. on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sombrero. Yeah. Black as hell. Mm. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, ay, ay. So you'll you'll be at Applebee's. If we need to find you, Junior, we know where to look for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Matter of fact, Junior is Spanish. Mm. <laughs> we'll have more. Um, the Steve Harvey Hola. Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after the hour. We'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. Como se dice? <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Here we go. Would you rather... Spoon and cuddle all night, mm. or would you rather sleep nose to nose all night? Oh, we can't <laughs> nose to nose. Oh, nah. hell. Spoon, spoon and cuddle. Spoon, we're going to have to do that spoon. Spoon and cuddle. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. eventually going to turn into two knives. We're going to separate the two. <laughs> From the spooning. <laughs> what we ain't going to do is be face to face all night. <laughs> Junior? Mm-mm. No, spoon and cuddle. Mm-mm. Oh, okay. Not face to face. Your Harvey? breath gonna change by two thirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got it down to a time now. <laughs> yeah. What? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna yawn and I'm gonna end the whole evening if we know to know. It'll be it. <laughs> All right. All right. Would you rather? Here we go. Steve, Tommy, and Junior do a ten city tour. Ten city tour. Or would you rather start a podcast? Which one? Oh, no. Ten City. Ten City Tour. You know what? I want to do that, man. Huh? Let's knock that out. Ten City that? Tour. Mm-hmm. Can we do a Ten City Tour? Huh? We can go on Thursday, Sunday and be halfway through. We can do that real quick. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Steve? Tell me the particulars of the tour, Junior, as you see it. How you see the tour playing out. What you mean? Tommy going to host? I'll feature you close. What you mean? How it's going to work out? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> in the 10 cities. And we're going to get a check, too? Radio Boys coming to a city. Come on, you, um, come on, you got yeah. it. Uh, Uncle Neff. Why are you thinking Steve? about it? 
<laughs> a dream deferred. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Steve, well, what? I don't think that's the tool. I just, okay. and then, you know, Junior, you assume Tommy going to oh. host and then you going to feature. And, you know, if we go out like that, they can't go out. You'd have to be you first, then Tommy. Well, Tommy hosting yeah, that. Then Tommy mind, Tommy think it'll be you, then me, then him. <laughs> He's right. He's right. <laughs> That's the lineup. So you guys are opening for for him? Yeah. <laughs> Let's let Jesus Ark host. Opening let Ark Tommy. host. Yeah. yeah. Ark host, then Junior, and then I'll shut it down. Mm. Okay, Unc, you okay with that? Mm. <laughs> no. okay. What will you be happy Next with, please? Yeah. Yeah. We'd have done every combination. Yeah. He don't want it. He don't want none of it. Yeah. Just say you don't want to go, period. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're moving on. All right. Would you rather never clip your toenails or never use wet wipes again? Oh, I can't lose my wet wipes. Ooh, you nasty God. either way. <laughs> I can't lose my wet wipes, man. No. <laughs> Right, Carla. <laughs> but we got to cut these toenails. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to keep your wet wipes. All right, coming up next, that's today's round of <laughs> Would You Rather. Coming up next, uh, last break of the day. And uh, Steve will close out the show right after this. The one and only. Wanda, bring me some wet wipes. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, guys, on this Monday, our last break of the day. This is it. So it's time for you, Steve. I have some closing remarks today. Um, I was thinking about something, and I said, wow, you know what, man? I I, I, want to share this with people because I had to readjust my thinking. Uh... And once I did that, it, it changed my success process. And I often hear people making excuses for why they're not successful. So my closing remarks today is to help you with that part of it right here. Listen to this, y'all. It's an adjustment. It's a mental adjustment that you have to make. It's a slight change in the way you're saying things. So here's what I'm saying to you. Stop making excuses why not listen to me carefully stop making excuses why not and make those excuses your why too see I've thought about this thing man most of the excuses that I've heard from myself and from other people if you took those same excuses that you're using as why you're not accomplishing something, why you're not doing something, why you're not successful. If you took those same excuses and turned them around and made those excuses your why too, it would be a game changer. See, you need reasons why you should be successful. That's what you need. You don't need excuses. You need to find reasons why you should be successful. Listen, if your excuse is I'm poor, well, I would do this, but I ain't got, I'm poor. That's a good reason that you should use to make more money. See, the thing that you're using as the excuse should oftentimes become the reason or the motivation if you think about it. But it's up to you now. You have to make that adjustment. So if you're sick and tired of being poor, That's a good reason to want to be motivated to make a little bit more money. Now, if your excuse is, I don't know the right people. Ever heard that before? Man, I just ain't, I just don't know, I ain't met the right people. Then that's why you need to start associating with a new group. See, you not knowing the right people can't be the excuse. It has to be the reason for you to do something else. You need to start associating with a new group. You know something? It's easy to meet people. It really is. It's easy to meet people. You've met all the people you know. How hard was it? You just went to where they was doing a certain thing and you was participating in that certain thing and then they became an associate of yours. You have to change that. You have to use those same reasons why not to turn them into the reason why to. 
Your excuse is no one ever taught me how. Well, if nobody ever taught you how, then don't you think that's a good reason that you need to train and educate yourself? See, that excuse of nobody ever taught me how, so what? They got the internet now. You know, you can Google anything. If ain't nobody ever taught you how, this is a perfect time for you to train and educate yourself. Stop using these excuses for why not and and get these reasons and use them as the why too. If your excuse is your family, your excuse is your family. My family this, my family that. Excuse me, get some friends. See, you actually get to pick your friends. You were born into the family. And if you were born into the wrong family, pick yourself some friends. Association brings on participation. My family, I love them to death. But I can only go so far with them. We can only talk about certain things. We got to stop the conversation ends. Because they're not going where I'm going. They don't, they don't want what I want. Now I got some other friends I can bring all these subjects up to. So stop using the excuse that, well, I was, it's my family. Skip your family. Get yourself some friends. You get to pick those people. I don't know what to do next. That's your excuse? Well, that would be a good time to develop a relationship with God, wouldn't you say? If you don't ever know what to do next, if you're stuck because you don't know what to do next, this excuse is a good reason to develop a relationship with God. Because guess what? I bet he know what to do next. Trust me, I've had to turn that way many times. I'll be turning that way today. I don't know how. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. Then guess what? This is a good reason for you to, to use your faith. I don't know how. I don't see how. I don't see how I'm going to make that happen. Well, you need to develop your faith. Faith is the belief in things you cannot see. I didn't see my life I have today. But I faithed it. I believed that I would have some type of life. And then he messed around and gave me exceedingly abundantly over all I thought I asked. That's the beautiful thing about that relationship with God. And let's, how about this, right? I don't have a plan. Well, if you don't have a plan, guess what? You need to dream. You need to dream about something to, to, to put a plan to. Stop using your excuses why not and take those same excuses and make it your why too. Come on, y'all. It's a mental adjustment. All you have to do is change the way you think from negative to positive and the results immediately will follow. It's automatically done that way. Thank you for listening. And if you didn't listen, it's okay too. I'll have something else tomorrow. Maybe that'll hit home. Y'all have a nice day. See you tomorrow. Talk to God. He'd love to hear from you. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 